hosts and watch as a winner is crowned before our very eyes. You see, I had actually, we rehearsed. Fred, is this true? We rehearsed. I rehearsed a finale, and it didn't work at all. Well, they told me, they yeah. cued me to look for the big finale and then yes. get out of the segment. I'm waiting it. and waiting. I had no idea that was that it. That was it. It didn't work. What was that? I, it's a magnificent thing. It's called the maneuver a la Edwards, and I throw the two hoops, and they come back, and I spin the two hoops. Only one sort of came back, well, and it fell off my me. arm. Yes. The other one hit me. But so. time permitting, will I have time here over Edwards? Good. Uh, okay. I'll stay tuned for that. Oh, boy. Okay. All of America will. <laughs> okay. Only teasing. All right. Our next guest has been called America's gutsiest gate crasher. She used bold faced lies, phony ID cards, and she just elbowed her way into some of the Tears, she would cry, she'd cry, she would act, she would yeah. She'd throw herself at people. She'd she throw herself. <laughs> she'd manage. She'd use sensuous rib sauce. I mean, you got <laughs> whatever it is. You know, she even rubbed shoulders with the likes of Ronald Reagan, Paul Ronald Newman. Ra here's Ronald oh, Reagan Ronald? right over here. and Paul Newman. Paul Newman right over there. and Our Julio Iglesias. Julio Iglesias right there. <laughs> And oh, who, Tom, who's that guy? Oh, Tom Selleck. Tom Halleck. Very tall. Yes. Please welcome Missy Laws. Here she is. Missy. Uh, nice to see you back again. Thank you for coming. Now, remember I got, I was annoyed with you last year. Yeah, you were annoyed. Tell the people why I was annoyed. He was annoyed because he thinks I was waking up Burt Reynolds at 7 o'clock in the morning. Who would think that Burt Reynolds, <laughs> after working all night and sleeping in a hotel room in New York, would be awakened at 7 o'clock in the morning by a phone call from a stranger? But you don't know what time he was working, and I didn't know either. Oh, okay. And see, celebrities have very unusual schedules, so you never know when they're sleeping or when they're awake. Mm -hmm. And maybe he was filming all night, and maybe he was still awake, and maybe he was going to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. Hey. If I called him at noon, I would have woken him up. Can, can you so. repeat the conversation again? Okay, have, yeah. Uh, phone I... rings. All right. You call the hotel. Yeah, I was asking Burt Reynolds to my junior senior prom because I wanted to become. You needed this a date. I needed a date for my prom. I wanted to become more popular in school. So this, I where thought, was the school in Atlanta? This was, was in Atlanta, yeah. Georgia, oh, okay. and I found out that Burt Reynolds was staying at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. Mm -hmm. So I telephoned the hotel and spoke to him at seven o'clock in the morning. Yes. And uh, he said he was unable to uh, make uh, the prom. Uh, wait, wait, just a moment. I don't want a summation. <laughs> the phone rings in his room. Uh huh. And probably it was. You know the sound when you wake somebody up. And you hear the phone pick up, and then it like hits the side of the phone a little yes, bit. Yes, right. And then there's a pause, <laughs> right? And then well, he sounded like he might have been asleep, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> But you know, I, I was surprised he didn't put a do not disturb. If he, most people, when they're sleeping, most Usually celebrities. Usually, most celebrities have their phone calls screened. Exactly. Also, I know. So. I was really amazed. I was very, very amazed that they were ringing the room. But maybe no one knew he was there, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. And I didn't ask him straight out to go to the prom because I didn't yes. think he would go. So I kind of made it into an event. I said, "This is a charity benefit," and I was going to make the prom into a charity benefit if possible because it was at a theater that was being demolished in Atlanta, is where the prom was going to be. And I knew that Mr. Reynolds was very into Atlanta and he had a restaurant in Atlanta. So how did he so react? He was very, very nice and very courteous and he said, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be in LA then and I won't be able to make it. But being 17 years old, I was really excited just to be able to just talk to him. Just to talk to him, which was really the purpose of the call, really. Well, I, I would have left him to go. I didn't really think, course, oh, he'll definitely yeah. go. But have, I, you, have you yeah. tried this technique with other uh, celebrities calling them up in their hotel rooms? Have they answered? Um, I don't do that very often. I mean, usually I don't do that because I don't, um, I don't want to invade privacy. I think that's mm -hmm. very important that you don't. I've called celebrities that I already knew, like I'd already met them. And, and how, do, how, how do they, pardon me, how do they know? People who listen to this may say, oh, she sounds like a groupie. Mm -hmm. You know, a groupie, you find groupies around stars, around rock musicians who will do anything to gain favor. You won't do anything to gain favor. I, yeah, I don't consider myself a groupie because I think of a groupie as someone who sleeps with celebrities. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that because I have specific morals and I really believe you have to be in love with somebody. And I was do they think that you are, action. though? When I think at first, mm -hmm. I think most people do, because celebrities are so used to having women throw themselves at them all the time. Oh, I know. It, is, I, such a, it is such a pain. Yeah. You can't get through the I know. Day. You have so many women. Yeah. I know. Yeah, Saw them you, all backstage. <laughs> but you go after women celebrities, too, and stars, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. If, um, yeah, exactly. Mm. But I think also by not sleeping with celebrities, I think it's good because they get, they get respect for you. Mm -hmm. I think I had m marriage proposals from stars. I don't think I would have had those had I, you Really? Know. Who asked you to marry them? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come no, on. because come I said no, I really don't think it's yeah. a, oh, I Give us initials. Don't. Initials. <laughs> I can tell you some of the people I dated, like Andy Gibb and John Schneider and Mac Davis and Tony Bennett and Hal Needham, and there are a lot of different celebrities well, that I've been at out At least with, you don't have strict age qualifications, obviously. I mean, no, you cover the whole. Tony Bennett is not. <laughs> coming <laughs> right from, you know, uh, exactly. young to old. Yeah. Um, do but you, also, also meeting celebrities is good for other things besides the dates. You can get jobs out of it. Yes. And when I was 17 years old, and after I asked Burt Reynolds, I still needed a date for the prom. So 
So what I did was, is I found out about an audition that was going on, and I totally crashed the audition, and I walked in, and I said, um, there are all these men sitting around in army uniforms, and I just walked in and said, hi, my name's Missy Laws, and my agent told me to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had no agent, I'd never done any acting in my life, and they said, oh, well, gosh, all the women auditioned this morning, do you think maybe you were already cast? I said, that must be it, that's got to be it, you know, and they said, well, you better hurry out to the set and get see wake, uh, wardrobe and makeup and you're probably the party girl. And I got out to the set and they made me up and they put the clothes on me and I was in the movie and I got a part and I got paid and I took my escort, an actor in the movie who was very handsome, to my prom. So it's amazing you can get jobs well, out of doing now, this. Now, was, this, uh, was <laughs> this movie, by the way, was Cycle Sluts from Hell, wasn't it? <laughs> Cycle Sluts? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. When we come back in just a moment, no. we're going to have Missy's six tips on how you can meet celebrities. Okay. Missy's six <laughs> tips. We'll be back. Shopping for back to school at department stores could be a waste of money. So smart shoppers save money at Marshall's. something new at the California Museum of Science and Industry. Okay, welcome back. Wait a minute. We Whoa. need a dollar in there. I said welcome back. Yeah, so you got to put no, no, a dollar. No, no, no. The phrase is, we're back again, right? No. Isn't that right? We're, we're back again. Give me the dollar. We'll put it right here. Come on. All right. Give me the 20 I gave you All right. for parking. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I owe you $20. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. Now, I figured out okay. over the four years yeah. we've worked together, you know, from the, you need right. money for parking? Right. $11,600. Yes, that's true. That okay, me. I do okay. owe you $20. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, Meet the Stars is Missy's book. And now we are going to give you some of Missy's secret tips on how you can meet celebrities. Okay. okay. Also, I'm going to be doing a sign this weekend, and I invite Tips some on how you can meet <laughs> celebrities. We'll say that later. Okay, okay. Okay. First of all, the main yes. thing you need to do is you need to uh, gather information and do research and find out everything about the celebrity in advance. Or the, mm -hmm. Even if you, this is good for meeting people in general, too, if you so want to do that. Research, no. Do research and find out the names of anybody who is, is with that celebrity, the manager, the agent, the secretary, and it can really come in handy. One time, uh, Bob Hope threw a party in Florida, and I crashed this party, and I got in, and these two huge security guards marked up, marched up to me and they said, how did you get here? And I said, um, I started naming these names. I said, oh, I, I'm a friend of, and I just had memorized all these people that work with Bob Hope. How did Hope. you manage to get into the party? I just kind of slid in. I mean, it wasn't anything complicated. By the way, you're, you're what, four foot eleven, right? Four eleven. Does you that help? Does in. that help yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> I crawl yeah. in on the floor. Uh. <laughs> so anyway, um, these guards said, well, uh, come with us. And they took me over to a member of Bob Hope's entourage. And he said, how did you get in here? And I just, I said, oh, I'm a friend of, and I was naming all these names, hoping the guy I was talking to was not one of the names I was mentioning. Oh, yeah. And, he, and he goes, oh, you know them? Oh, okay. And I was allowed to stay in the party just because I had done my research and mm -hmm. learned those names. So. Know, write this down. Know your research. <laughs> know who you're going after. Next. And personalize is also very yes. important. When you meet the celebrity, you want to you be able to, to personalize and make things apply to them. One time I wanted to get a date with Hal Needham, who's uh -huh. the director who did Smokey and the Bandit. He's a and, stuntman. And yeah, yes. and works with a lot of Burt Reynolds pictures. Mm -hmm. And he was living at Burt Reynolds' guest house at the time. And I had read, you know, I had learned all this information. And I found a card in a card shop that was so perfect for Hal Needham. It said, to a handsome, sexy, wonderful man. And inside it said, but enough about Burt. Burt Reynolds. All I did was just put a little note and signed it. I sent it to him, and he called up and asked me on a okay, date. Okay, Missy, so. we have now taken up almost all the time. I'm sorry. Number one. Okay. okay. Uh, let's go over the other as okay. quickly as we can. Okay. Try to let them approach you if yes. possible, uh, rather than going up to them because How do you celebrities do that? Do you stand there like. Yeah. Well, no. It's actually, or? if you don't pay a lot of attention to them, sometimes it. Uh. it it kind of makes them want to come up to you. Number I can't three, understand number three is overdress. Overdress. So and you stick out in the crowd. So yeah, and, and all, well, mainly because you want to appear impressive, and it helps mm. you get past security, and it makes you seem on their monetary level when they meet you. Number so that's important. Number four. Uh, four is to compliment uniquely. Don't just say, oh, I love your show, or what everybody else says. Yeah. You say something unusual. You don't say you look bigger on your show than in person. For okay. <laughs> number that five. Wins me over every time. Learn a right? joke or two is a good idea to make them relax. And number six. And six is to get to know their friends first, especially if they're having a shy person, like a Johnny Carson or something, or if they're very famous and they have a lot of people coming up to them. If you get to know the people around them, they'll feel you more can, comfortable. You can, by the way. Here's a tip to get to meet you. Missy if you want to. She'll be at B. See, this is how we work the program. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. She'll be at B. Dalton Bookstores at the Beverly Center this Saturday, September 3rd, which is just this Saturday, uh, from 2 to 4 o'clock. Missy, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Here. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, thank you. Thanks.